The ABC conjecture was first put forward in 1980 by Joseph Osterl of the University of Paris and David Massa of the Mathematics Institute of the University of Baal in Switzerland. It's considered one of the most important unsolved problems in number theory. Let's find out more about it. If the ABC conjecture were proved correct, the proofs of many other famous conjectures and theorems would follow immediately, in some cases in just a few lines. The vastly complex current proof of Fermat's last theorem, for example, would reduce to less than a page of mathematical reasoning. The ABC conjecture is quite simple to state compared to most of the deep questions in number theory. What's more, it turns out to be equivalent to all the main problems that involve Diophantine equations. These are equations with integer coefficients and integer solutions. We need to be aware of only a couple of concepts to understand the ABC conjecture. The first concept is that of square-free number. This is an integer that isn't divisible by the square of any number. For example, 15 and 17 are square-free, but 16, which is divisible by 4 squared, and 18 divisible by 3 squared, are not. The second concept we have to know about is the square-free part of an integer n, denoted by sqp of n. This is the largest square-free number that can be formed by multiplying the prime factors of n. For example, for n equals 15, the prime factors are 5 and 3, and 3 times 5 equals 15, a square-free number. So the square-free part of 15 equals 15. On the other hand, for n equals 16, the prime factors are all 2, which means that the square-free part of 16 equals 2. Similarly, the square-free part of 17 is 17, and the square-free part of 18 is 6. In general, if n is square-free, the square-free part of n is just n. Otherwise, the square-free part of n represents what is left over after all the factors that create a square have been eliminated. In other words, the square-free part of n is the product of the distinct prime numbers that divide n. For example, the square-free part of 9 is sqp of 3 times 3, which is 3. And the square-free part of 1400 equals sqp of 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5 times 7 which is 2 times 5 times 7, or 70. The ABC conjecture deals with pairs of numbers that have no common factors. Suppose A and B are two such numbers and that C is their sum. For example, if A equals 3 and B equals 7, then C equals 3 plus 7, or 10. Now consider the square-free part of the product, A times B times C. So we have sqp of 3 times 7 times 10, which equals 210. For most choices of a and b, the square-free part of abc is greater than c, as in the example above. In other words, the square-free part of abc over c is greater than 1. Occasionally, however, this isn't true. For instance, if a equals 1 and b equals 8, then c equals 1 plus 8, or 9. And the square-free part of abc is the square-free part of 1 times 8 times 9, which is the square-free part of 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, which equals 1 times 2 times 3, or 6. And in this case, sqp of abc over c equals 6 over 9, or 2 over 3. Similarly, if a equals 3 and b equals 125, the ratio is 15 over 64. And if a equals 1 and b equals 512, the ratio is 2 over 9. David Massa proved that the ratio of the square-free part of abc over c can get arbitrarily small. In other words, given any number greater than 0, no matter how small, it's possible to find integers a and b for which the square-free part of abc over c is smaller than this number. 
In contrast, the ABC conjecture states that the square free part of ABC to the N over C does reach a minimum value if N is any number greater than 1. Even a number such as 1.00000 etc. 1, which is just barely larger than 1. The tiny change in the expression makes a vast difference in its mathematical behavior. The ABC conjecture, in effect, translates an infinite number of Diophantine equations, including the equation of Fermat's last theorem, into a single mathematical statement. The conjecture remains unproven. In 2012, the Japanese mathematician Shin Moshizuki claimed to have proved the ABC conjecture using a new set of techniques which he calls interuniversal Teichmuller theory, a generalization of the foundations of algebraic geometry. In a nutshell, Moshizuki devised a new scheme of mathematical objects which he believes he understands well enough to apply to proving this long-standing problem in Diophantine analysis. Most of the number theorists remain unconvinced, partly because Moshizuki's ideas are so difficult to understand and partly because it seems there may be a gap in his argument that may fatally undermine it. Time will tell. But for now, the ABC conjecture remains one of the most important and tantalizing open problems in mathematics. Thanks for watching. As always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. And I'll see you again very soon to discover more maths.